Hello Infobris and this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing this really awesome paper that suggests that one of the most iconic black hole collisions might have been actually something entirely different. Statistically speaking, they suggest that it's more likely to have been an exotic star collision of two different types of stars known as boson stars, with these stars themselves being made out of exotic dark matter-like particle known as axion. Similar to a concept we've discussed in one of the previous videos. So let's talk a little bit more about this because this potentially could be a completely new discovery with really serious implications for our understanding of the universe. First of all, let's start right here. What this shows us is essentially a list of all of the confirmed black hole or neutron star collisions as of the making of this video. This technically will be expanded in the next few years as we detect more of these collisions, but for now this is the best version we have. And on the left here you see the total mass of the object involved with the objects colliding and turning into something a little bit more massive. And although for the most part we believe most of these to be black holes with only some neutron stars, with one detection potentially being a neutron star and black hole collision, what's really unusual here is that the total frequency, the scientists have never expected to discover so many so quick. The theory prior to these detections suggested that maybe this is going to be like an annual event, something we might be able to see maybe a few times a year, but not that many. And although we've had many explanations to this already, such as maybe we're seeing the black holes that are colliding very close to the center of galaxies where we expect to have many black holes, or maybe we're seeing collisions of black holes in the middle of a global cluster, the true answer to this frequency has never really been established. And because of this, and also because of several other observations, there have always been these lingering mysteries of what exactly happened to some of these black holes, and if they're even black holes. One such detection in particular we've talked about last year, and that one was really groundbreaking. First of all, it was an official confirmation that intermediate black holes actually exist. And that's of course black holes that are roughly around 100 to a few thousand masses of the sun. And second of all, during that particular detection, one of the black holes that was colliding with the other black hole had a total mass of about 85 masses of the sun. And that's actually a type of a black hole we don't believe exists for several reasons. It's what's known as a forbidden mass black hole. Basically, there's a certain mass that we don't expect to be produced in nature, simply because when stars of certain masses go supernova, they'll normally end up producing black holes up to a certain mass. After this, the stars actually undergo a different reaction, a reaction that's known as pair instability supernova that usually just completely explodes the star, meaning that black holes of 85 masses of the sun should not really exist in theory. And because of the detection of that particular black hole, it created a huge mystery. And, well, a lot of scientists in the last few years have been crunching the numbers and trying to figure out what exactly happened in this particular case. The case known as GW190521. And the scientists in the recent paper, by crunching the numbers, realized that statistically speaking, a more likely scenario here would actually not be two black holes. It would be two stars that we technically refer to as exotic stars, known as Proca stars, also known as boson stars. And those of you who love jumping into papers and just reading everything yourself, the paper in regards to Proca stars and the theory behind them is in the description below, as are some of the other articles as well. And at the same time, there's also this video I made previously somewhere right there that explains a little bit more about these unusual stars. But in general, what Proca stars or boson stars could potentially represent are basically types of stars made out of not regular fermion matter, in other words, not really made out of atoms and out of protons and neutrons, but instead are made out of bosons, which are things like, for example, photons of light, or even some more exotic particles like mesons, pions, kaons, and Higgs bosons. But in this particular case, the scientists suggest that there's also a possibility to have some other still undiscovered particles, which can definitely exist out there as well. In this case, they refer to a hypothetical particle that we sometimes refer to as an axion. The still unconfirmed and undiscovered particle that could also explain the dark matter. Because that's exactly what we believe dark matter could be made out of as well. In other words, this is sort of an implication suggesting that this was a collision between two dark matter-like objects that essentially created a larger black hole. And according to the scientists in this paper, statistically at least, the collision between two boson stars, or in this case two Proca stars, makes a lot more sense, and they use a pretty strong mathematical argument to explain why they think so. 
Now in this case, I think it's worth talking about what exactly we think these objects might look like or might actually contain on the inside, and also what exactly might have happened here and what the scientists believe now. So first of all, a lot of this so far is based on computer simulations and a lot of this is mathematical. We still don't really know if the, any of this is true. But theoretically speaking, there is no reason for boson stars not to exist. A typical boson star would basically contain these particles on the inside that just like photons can exist in the same place at the same time. In more scientific terms, they actually can exist in the same quantum state. Which means that you can put a bunch of them in a single point in space and nothing will happen, they will be able to exist in there completely fine. And if suddenly you find yourself with a lot of bosons all in the same tiny point, they obviously will start creating a really large mass and might even start acting like a typical black hole, at least in terms of the gravitational effects. Now the best simulation to date showing us what they might kind of look like is this. This is what maybe a boson star might appear like. You still have some sort of large shadow-like object from all of the light that can no longer escape, but there are probably going to be a lot of other effects from light, because for the most part this object would actually be completely transparent. On the other hand, if a boson star starts spinning, it might actually start creating a very peculiar donut-like shape, mostly because of the centrifugal forces, which would give the bosonic matter this unusual shape. You can actually learn more about this from the link in the description, including some of the simulations from the study. But when the regular matter or the fermionic matter, such as basically stuff we are made out of, falls into this kind of an object, it starts actually accumulating there and will eventually start producing light as well. While at the same time the object itself will also bend the light slightly different from a black hole. And because of this there is a way for us to technically tell them apart if they are close enough. And so unlike a black hole, a Proca star or a boson star will definitely emit light that can be detected. And in my attempts to simulate this using some of the simulations like Space Engine, I tried to create something that might resemble a typical boson star, but it's actually really challenging, mostly because we still have no idea what they might resemble. But here's what maybe one would resemble. It's a spinning object, it spins extremely fast, it also has a huge mass similar to a typical black hole, and it contains a little bit of mass that creates all of this light that you see. But in reality we actually have no idea. All of this is simulated so far and all of this is somewhat theoretical. But now imagine two of these objects colliding. And when the collision happens they actually do destabilize each other and might create a potential for a black hole to suddenly be created as well. In other words, if two boson stars collide, theoretically they can then collapse into a typical black hole. And in this paper this is exactly what the scientists believed happened. They believed that mathematically it makes sense that it was not black holes colliding but boson stars, but at the end they did produce essentially an intermediate mass black hole, which does kind of solve a lot of problems for modern physics. First of all, it allows us to understand why such an unusual black hole was allowed to exist to begin with, it was not a black hole, it was a boson star. Second of all, it explains that dark matter is real, and can even create objects similar to black holes, in this case a boson star. And third of all, it once again confirms intermediate black holes exist. So in some sense this theory or this paper provides a lot of solutions, while at the same time also providing a potential value for the mysterious dark matter particle known as axion. All of this so far sounds amazing on paper. But whether this is the reality, well that's where science gets to work and tries to either confirm or deny this. There are probably going to be a lot of follow-up papers, a lot of analysis, and it will probably take years and years of studies before we can finally figure all of this out. But assuming that they are correct and assuming that it was actually boson stars and not black holes, this also kind of changes what we might have detected in terms of distances, simply because the collision between two boson stars would not be as powerful gravitationally. The scientists believe that the distance was thus much much closer, and because the distance was closer, it means that the final black hole produced was also more massive. So instead of this being a black hole of about 140 masses of the sun, it might have actually been a much more massive 230 masses of the sun black hole produced at the end. Which still makes it even more exciting and even more interesting, because it definitely means intermediate black holes can actually be produced by different means. But naturally there are still going to be a lot of questions, even if this is true. For example, how can a massive boson star form like this? Obviously it's not impossible, but it's still important to understand how a typical boson star would actually create something that's about 85 masses of the sun. If this was just a clump of dark matter, we still want to know exactly how they form. 
And the other question is obviously, are these objects pretty much everywhere around us, or was this a completely unique scenario that we might not see for a while? At the same time, how many other similar collisions might have also been Proca stars or boson stars? So here this is where the analysis might come in and start answering some of these questions. Maybe the frequency of these collisions can indeed be explained by the fact that a lot of these were just dark matter collisions. Or basically boson stars made out of axions which in a nutshell represent dark matter. And so maybe some of the future studies and some of the future observations will help us answer some of these questions. Like for example we know that these objects would also have extremely powerful magnetic fields so maybe there's a way for us to detect all of this by using some of the other analysis from some of the other detections. And if the study is correct in estimating the total mass of the so-called axion, it would make this particle about one trillionth of the mass of a typical neutrino. Which is of course why it's kind of difficult to detect these particles. But with time knowing what we're looking for, we can definitely prove this or disprove this once and for all. But until this is done and until we know what's going on here, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out previous videos I mentioned on this topic and also subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon through channel memberships or by buying one of the wonderful person t-shirts in the description below. Either way, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful and as always, bye bye.